You are where you are today because of the voices that you have trusted to speak into your life. And so this is why Deborah is so significant, because Deborah is a speaker. Deborah is a speaker. And, and here's the great deception of Deborah, is that Deborah always speaks in the first person to make you believe that they are your thoughts. Isn't, isn't that interesting that you got a speaker talking to you in the first person? You hear them in the first person, and so naturally you assume, hmm, wonder what made me think that. You ever had some crazy thought come across your mind, and then you, you ask yourself, hmm, wonder what made me think. <laughs> Maybe it is Deborah, this spirit here. It's a relationship. See, you got to conquer these challenging relationships of this thing coming to your mind. I remember years ago I was teaching the Bible, back in the 70s. And this lady said to me that a voice came to her and told her to kill somebody. The voice said, you know, I, I knew who the speaker was. I knew who the speaker was. You'd be surprised how when individuals do that, and I remember a young lady called me one time. She had gotten away with murder, literally. Literally, she had gotten away with murder and it was eating her soul out. And she couldn't sleep. And she had to confess, and she called me. She said, I killed my boyfriend. She told me where it was done, how it was done. And she said, I hadn't been able to sleep afterwards. I hadn't been able to sleep. It's amazing that how a person will act on something that a voice told them and not even understand who the author is. You see, you are where you are today because of the voices that you trusted to speak into your life. Some people, the voices might have been some older folks that were hanging around them that groomed them into devil, devilish behavior mannish kind of stuff that talk them into it. You know how men, they, they, can, they can pressure, there's a peer pressure in young, young guys trying to impress slightly older guys, and, and they'll make him feel, you know, oh man, you ain't gonna be no punk, are you? Come on, you go. And they talk them into something. This is Deborah trying to talk you into what God says to stay out of. This is Deborah. This is Deborah. And uh, the great deception, again, is that he will speak to you in the first person. And so Deborah is that voice that tries to change who you are and what you are. He's got a, he's got a goal. There is a motive. He's trying to change who you are and what you are. And so he throws doubt into your mind about what God uh, will do on your behalf. And let, let me just say this to you, that whenever your mind becomes filled with doubt, go to the Word of God, because the Word will bring you clarity. Whenever your mind becomes filled with doubt, go to the Word. Go to the Word of God. Go to the Word of God. Get on your knees. Whenever you are filled with doubt, search it out in the Word. The Word brings clarity. The Word brings clarity. And so, remember Deborah now, because Deborah is speaking to you in the first person, he's always speaking in the first person, uh, he'll say things uh, to, to you like this, you know, nobody will ever love me, ain't nobody going to ever love me. He put that thought in your mind and then make you think it, and then you take ownership of it. He'll say it this way, I'm too old. I'm too old for that. He'll tell another young person, I'm too young. I'm too young. I mean, he, he gave that to, to Jeremiah. I'm too young. I don't have enough experience. I mean, he just starts putting stuff. I'm dumb. I always do stupid things. Just start talking in the first person. I'll never have a baby. I'll never get married. I'm not attractive enough. I'm always messing up everything that I get. I'll never be able to keep any money. And he starts speaking these thoughts one 
after another, after another, after another. And guess what happens that a repeated lie becomes believed after a while. If you lie to yourself enough, you'll start believing it, even though it may not have any basis in reality. It may not have any basis in reality. People that commit suicide, you know that there's some little voice in their head that's to kill yourself. You ought to just kill yourself. You ought to just end it all. You ought to just end it all. And don't ever think that that's just a little phase and it's going to pass away. Because I, I don't know whether you realize it or not, but in this nation, suicide is probably the second largest killer between young people the ages of 12 to 25 years old. So there are a lot of people that's hearing that and responding to it. Kill yourself, kill yourself. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. They found one young man who committed suicide and sitting in his truck, in his CD player, was the song Suicide Solution that he had been listening to over and over. Deborah, programming his mind, speaking. You've got to watch who is the Deborah that's on the other side of your child's cell phone. Who is the Deborah on the other side of the chat on the internet? Who? Who is that voice? Who? Because the voices that you trust. Come here, baby. Come here. I ain't going to do nothing to you. Can't. you we, 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 we wind up in, in deep voodoo because of the voices that we trust. And you can't stop Deborah from speaking to you, but you can talk back. You can talk back. And much of our talking back is actually for our benefit so that, um, that we will know the truth and let that truth that we know make us free. We need to talk back to, the, to Deborah for our own benefit, for our own benefit, reminding us of the truth. That no, 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 this is not me. No, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I mean, we, we have to start speaking to, 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 to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our hearts to the Lord. I mean, when the devil tells you nobody wants you, you have to start saying, I am the apple of God's eye. Uh, his eye, somebody does want me. His eye is on me, and he is covering me. He is blessing me. He knows that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I mean, you have to start confessing. That's what I'm saying. Whenever you're in doubt, look to the Word. Look to the Word. The Word brings clarity. The Word brings clarity. And remember that Deborah is in your head, but the Holy Spirit is in your heart. He's in your heart. And your heart knows things that your head never does know and never will know. And so the best way to deal with the spirit of Deborah is to become a speaker yourself, a speaker of the Word of God. You become a speaker yourself. When you're dealing with a voice that's talking to you, don't be the victim. If you've got a negative, limiting thought that comes to your mind, put an empowering thought there. Bring a scripture there. Bring a, 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 an affirmation. Bring a positive confession empowered and based upon biblical principles and speak that out. Speak that out. Don't just be the victim sitting there and allowing that to then become your inner voice. You have to actually talk back. Don't sit in silence. They could be saying things on the outside, but if you get fired, just have, you got to have that conversation all on your inside just to keep, keep your own sanity. You know, if somebody, you know, if they're calling you stupid, you know, you got to say in your mind, and you can, I know you can lose your job over it, but you got to say, I'll show you stupid. I, I mean, you got to say that inside. You, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you, you, there are certain things in order to keep your sanity. You, you, you've got to be able to, to, to speak, but don't sit there and listen without your becoming a speaker. So whenever the devil starts making noise, you got to make more noise. You got to turn your volume up. Amen. Turn your volume up. Don't let him drown you out with satanic stuff, you know. Now, I don't know how true this is, but, you know, they said that, you know, the rock group Kiss, they said that it stood for king in satanic sound. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not. But whenever you are hearing satanic sound, you have to pump up your volume and, and produce God's sound. Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. 
I mean, have you ever thought about the fact that the serpent in the Garden of Eden would have been powerless had he never opened his mouth? I want you to notice that in, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 5 in the English Standard Version. Notice this. Now the serpent was more crafty, more subtle than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, now see, you remember, see, he had a voice, he could talk. Did God actually say you shall not eat of, the, the, of any tree in the garden? Making them question. That's why I said, if you ever question, go back to the Word. Whenever you have doubt, go back to the Word. The devil threw doubt in her mind. Notice, he said to the woman, he had a voice, and he said something to her. Did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, surely die. You will not surely die. <laughs> For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. <laughs> He's having a conversation with Deber, devil, Deber. He's having a conversation. And you see, her destiny was impacted because of the voice that she trusted. She listened and obeyed his voice. And that's why one of the curses that came upon the serpent was that his voice was taken away. And I don't know whether you realize it or not, the serpent, snakes are the most feared of species. I mean, we don't, we, you know, we don't fool with snakes. Now, I don't know about you, but I, you know. I can deal with spiders and bugs and other things, but I, I ain't going to fool with no snake. I don't want to fool with that. You know, we, we don't fool with snakes. I mean, we'll deal with a, with a ferocious dog and coyotes and wolves or whatever, but you know, a, a snake, if a snake is in the house, they can have a house. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm coming out of there. I'm coming out of there. And I'm not going back in there until somebody has gone in there and has shown me what they brought out. <laughs> I never will forget, I was down in Costa Rica, and I was talking with a lady, uh, you know, and she'd, she'd stayed in this place. She's trying to be creative and adventurous and all of that. She stayed up in the jungle. I visited the jungle and took a mud bath and all of that kind of stuff, but she stayed in the resort there. And this, this Caucasian lady, she, she said to me, she said, I, I, I'll never be back here. Because when she, she was awakened in the night, something moved her pillow. I said, what was it? She said it was a boa constrictor. And she jumped up out of the bed. And she opened the door. When she opened the door, a series of tarantulas were hanging. And she took off running down the the hall and went to the manager's office. And I said, what happened next? <laughs> well, she said, because the place was at capacity, they couldn't move her to another room. So the manager comes back to the room, <laughs> back to her room, searches the room thoroughly for the snake, couldn't find the snake. Now they're at capacity. There's no other room that they can move her to. It's the middle of the night. She's in the jungle. I said, I bet you stayed up the rest of the night, didn't you? <laughs> she said, you got that right. <laughs> you know why? Because we don't fool with snakes. We don't fool with snakes. But this very snake that she was afraid of didn't have a voice. He couldn't growl. Yeah. Couldn't growl. He couldn't do that. I mean, the only thing that they can do is pass air through to make the hissing sound. Psst, psst. 
but they have no voice. God took it. He took the voice. It's one of the judgments against the serpent. Prior to that, the serpent had been talking his head off, explaining all kinds of things. But I want you to notice Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 23 in the English Standard Version. Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. You see, Deborah is so dangerous. Uh, even James chapter 1 verse 9 reminds us, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Slow to wrath. I want you to understand the process of that. You do understand the difference between wrath and anger. Wrath is the expression of anger. Anger is an emotion. Wrath is an act. It is an act. A woman gets mad, out of her anger she slaps. The slap is a wrath. That's wrath. Anger is the emotion. But I want you to notice the order here. Swift to hear, be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath in that order. Because they know that most people do it just in the opposite direction. They are quick to wrath. I mean, you say something, they're quick to wrath, quick to speak, and slow to hear. And the biblical instruction, quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to act on your anger. Slow, slow. Now, here are five things that Deborah does when he speaks. He infuses doubt and questions truth. You notice what he did with Eve. Infuses doubt. Has God not said? He infuses doubt and questions truth. Number two, he confuses identity. He confuses identity. He, he made her feel as though she couldn't do something that she already could do. He says when you partake of this fruit, you're going to be like God. She was already like him. She was made in his image. After his likeness, she was already like him. But he confused her identity. So he made her think that she had to get something in order to be like him. She was already like him. Listen, before the devil can ever get you to misbehave, he must confuse your identity. He must make you forget who you are. He must make you forget that you're a child of God. He must make you forget. I'm telling you, when people are sinning, they're not thinking about, I'm deacon, I'm elder, I'm reverend so-and-so, I'm bishop. So, when they sin, they, are, they do not want that identity. They forget that identity. Here's the third thing. Espouses contrary doctrine. Espouses contrary doctrine. He lied to Eve. He espoused a contrary doctor. You will not surely die. God had already told you, you eat it, you die. No questions asked. There was nothing to be confused about. You eat it, you die. There were no questions. He espouses contrary doctrine. Number four, uh, he deceives, deceives. He deceived Eve. He deceived her, he tricked her. And number five, he breeds rebellion. Breeds rebellion. These are five things that Deborah does when he speaks. Now, I want you to notice this. Because words are like seeds. You know, when you speak words, you're planting seeds. When you speak words, you're planting seeds almost like in the garden of somebody's mind. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8 says this, And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put a man whom he had formed. Now I want you to notice this, that God planted a garden as opposed to speaking it into existence. I want you to notice that. God planted a garden. He planted it. He planted it. He had to plant all of the trees. God planted a garden. And it's the example of how we are made. We're made in the image of God. We have to plant what we intend to reap. He didn't just speak it into the existence. It wasn't just name it and claim it and blab it and grab it. 
God rolled up his sleeves. God planted. He planted. There were other things that he spoke into existence. Let there be light. Pow. He spoke it. But when God wanted something that was going to reproduce after its kind, he had to create the seed and plant the seed, and it reproduced after its kind. So when you want to produce something that's going to keep on producing it, you have to plant it and not speak it. So if a man wants a child, he must plant it. He can't just speak it. He has to plant it. There are some things that are designed for the productivity in the earth that must be planted. If God had to plant it and couldn't speak it, how much more do you have to plant things that you might have been trying to speak into existence? There are some things. You plant a church. You plant a business. You plant a family. You plant an idea. There are certain things that you have to plant and you can't just speak. You have to plant it. You have to plant it. You have to plant it. And so what people uh, say has no bearing on what God has planted in you. What people say about you has no bearing on what God has planted in you. Now let me say this to you. There are some things that are in you that will not bloom until a certain amount of time has passed. And the devil can make you think that you are barren and don't have anything in you, but remember God has planted some stuff. He has buried treasure in you. It's planted in you. And whatever is planted when the water comes is coming back up. It's coming back up. He has planted certain things in you. It's hidden in you. It's planted in you. And there are certain things that will not bloom until the season is right. And, and the devil can make you think that you're, that you're just empty, that your life is void, and I wonder why I can't get anything to work for me. You see, when a little girl is born, a little girl has all of the eggs in her ovaries that she will ever have. She doesn't manufacture eggs. A little girl is born with all of the, ov uh, the eggs that she'll ever have already in both ovaries. She doesn't manufacture eggs. But what happens is that when she reaches around 11 or 12 years old, the eggs that God planted start maturing. And every month, of the right ovary will release an egg one month, and the left ovary will release an egg the next month. And they alternate back and forth in a season and a process, and it's, it's waiting for a seed to be planted for conception to take place. And it, wouldn't it be amazing if, if you were, because uh, you, you've been holding out for five years and you think that your eggs ought to be mature, but they're not? There's some thing that God has planted in you that will not manifest until the fullness of time. The fullness of time. And when the fullness of time comes, the thing matures and bam, God will bring it. You don't want God to bring you a blessing that you are not mature enough to, to sustain. It's one thing to play with a baby doll. It's another thing to have a baby and have to feed that child and help that child with homework and sit up with a sick child and take them to doctor's appointments and take them to, to practice and pick them up for sports and to pick them up after school and to help them, you know, with, with their projects and, 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 and give them lunch money and to take them shopping and to do this for Christmas. And to, you don't do all of that with a baby doll. And there's something that you might think that you're a little mama. But you don't really want a baby because you're not prepared to be a mama yet. And so God won't even let certain things start dropping for you until a certain maturity in the spirit. You have to understand that in the spirit realm, there are some things that God is just waiting on you to get ready. You think you're waiting on God, but God says, I'm waiting on you to grow up because what I would have blessed you with, if I were to give it to you right now, your back is not strong enough. This blessing would break your back right now. You're not even ready. If I brought you the husband right now with your mouth, you would run him off. Oh, he's trying. I'm just telling you. I'm just, there's some thing that God says, I got to put you in check. I got to grow you up. I, I, there's some things I got to purge out of you. There's some other thing that I've got to develop in you. But because I don't want you to corrupt the blessing that I'm going to bring into you. So I'm, I'm going to wait until you can be mature enough to where you realize you don't have to speak everything that you think. 
And, and I want you to know that this is not about you, that you've got to be able to love beyond what you can see. You've got to be able to say, you know what, this is not the ideal, but I'm still going to love it because I see the ideal in there, and I'm going to love you until you come into that position. But it takes maturity, a whole lot of maturity, to be able to treat a person as though they already were that, to call those things that be not, even as though they were, to say that they are your king, your, your knight, and your shining armor, to say that this is my queen. It takes a lot of maturity to be able to encourage people who are still developing, who are still making mistakes, you know, so that you don't corrupt the blessing that God is trying to send you. There are certain things that he has a time for a certain age, and so God will plant things in you before you need them, and then he will allow them to mature over time. But character and honor, they must be forged. You can't just speak them into existence. They must be forged. That's why Adam had to work the garden. You can't just speak to it. You have to work it. You have to forge character. And there's a character that is built in, in that whole working the garden. Character and honor must be forged. And so we should sometimes hold off even praying the prayer of Jabez. Oh God, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. The reason that I'm saying that you ought to delay praying the prayer of Jabez is because Jabez prayed that prayer. The Bible says that Jabez was more honorable than all of his brothers. Jabez was a man of honor. Why would God want to bless a dishonorable man? And so until you have sown the seeds of honor, until you have sown the seeds of honor, don't ask God to bless your field. Because it is like asking God to bless a field in which there is no seed. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Join us again next time for Power for Living, where revelation is power, power for living.